Hello and welcome to the second in our series of live workshops for Crowdfund Barking and Dagenham. My name is Katie Austin and I'm a coach here at crowdfunder.co.uk and I'm broadcasting live today from our head office in Newquay, Cornwall. And we're also really lucky to be joined today by a project owner, Tom from Walk the Plank UK. Um, and they, they ran their project um, 25K for 25 years, an amazing project. And he's going to be talking to us more in a moment um, about his project. And just give us a little wave, Tom. Hi there. Hello. Um, Good afternoon. Um, <laughs> um, so today we're going to be talking about creating your unique project page. Um, and we'll start off with a little introduction from Tom. And um, Tom, just what were you looking to achieve um, with your crowdfunder campaign? Okay, um, I'm the uh, marketing and comms director for Walk the Plank. So I was given a challenge in the new year, um, just as we were coming to the completion of our new capital bill to find an extra 25K. Um, so no pressure there then. Um, I'd never done a crowdfunding project before, so this was a real challenge for me. Um, and what sold us on the crowdfunder site was how easy it was with the coaching and how it sold us into the process. So our key objective basically was to raise 25K to help us complete a 1 million plus Arts Council funded new creative hub here in Salford. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And you did even better than £25,000. You actually raised about 30000 didn't you? Just we did. Um, at the end of it, we, uh, as we came to the last week of the campaign, we decided to go for uh, a stretch for another 5K, which we didn't even think we'd get 15 to begin with. So to double it to 30 was incredible. You did fantastic, Clue. So we're going to get some really good advice throughout the session from Tom about how they made such an amazing job of um, their crowdfund project. Um, so first, we're just going to have a look um, at what we're going to talk about today and, and just to mention that we ran another session last week on planning your project and um, that was the first in this series and um, so if you haven't watched that you can find that on the event bike page um, or there's a link to it down below um, and we spoke in that session about creating your team um, refining your project idea um, and creating your network map so get back and have a look at that afterwards if you haven't already and today we're going to talk about creating the perfect project page so we're going to have a look at how to tell your story really clearly and in an engaging way and also um, about rewards and um, how to create the best rewards for your project um, and in next week's session, we're going to be looking at running your project. So how to communicate to all of your network, what you're doing, um, when your project's gone live, and in what way, and a little bit of the strategy about getting people to your page and pledging on your project throughout your campaign. So we also want to mention at this point that we have some fantastic downloadable guides um, that go hand in hand or work really well solo um, alongside these sessions. Um, so there's one that goes with today, um, creating your project, that's part two. There's three guides, um, one that goes with each of these, um, these videos. Mm -hmm. So they're amazing, they're interactive, there's exercises, templates, checklists, fantastic tool that I highly, highly recommend downloading if you haven't already um, and really getting your teeth stuck into to help you make the project. And one of the really fantastic things in this, um, this session's uh, guide, the part two guide, is that there are some examples um, and it's a PDF guide. You can actually click on the examples and you download it on your computer and it will take you to the example projects on crowdfunder.co.uk. Um, I cannot stress enough how amazing a tool and, and way to learn about crowdfunding is by looking at previous projects. It's the best way. You can see what you like, what you don't like, what you would have done differently. Um, and that's also why we're so lucky to be joined by someone who has, has run a project today. And Tom's going to give us some top pieces of advice. So... Tom, we're going to come to you. Um, what is the most important thing to think about when you're running your crowdfunded project? 
Okay, I think um, the first thing is to make sure that it has a really compelling story. Um, I know from my background in advertising that people, one of the things that I was trained on is give people a really strong narrative, get them to buy in why you want the money and the difference that it's going to make. Make your story very simple and as was very simple. Basically, we were moving from a very crummy building. We were living in a, working from an end terrace next to an Indian takeaway. Um, and we were moving into a one million pound plus Arts Council funded new creative hub. It's very exciting. So we got people to buy into the amazing things. Just think what we could do in this new building if we'd done amazing things from the crummy old one that we were in. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. And you really told your story in a really clear and engaging way. And that's really important to hammer home how important that is. Um, so telling your story. We've broken this down into kind of three main questions. And we've just pulled out some examples from, from your project page, um, yeah. Tom, uh, just to really kind of look at that in more detail. Um, so we're going to start with a really important key question that you need to tackle straight away. What are you trying to achieve? What, what are you doing? Why are you running the project? Um, you need to make this clear from the outset. Why are we here? Um, and the 25K for 25 Years project did this really well. And, and look, we got in that first, the, that first par paragraph, in that first paragraph, we've got, it's they're putting the essential finishing touches to their new home. That's kind of says in, in a summary what they're doing. And something I really loved about Tom's project page was that they not only give what they're trying to do, but why they're trying to do it. So the money um, is designed, the, the money's going to go towards helping them fit out their internal courtyard. And they and they tell us why, why that's so important. What's you know, what, what's the point behind it? Um, that it's a really important outdoor space. Um, for the staff and the visitors, they use it for the training that they're doing, um, and they're like doing loads of things in that space. It's really important to for important to get that reason across. And also, again, at the bottom, another reason they were raising the money was um, for the right specification of lighting throughout the building. Um, and they not only say, "Oh yeah, we just want some lighting," um, they say why for security reasons. It's a windowless building, so they need those. That lighting is really important. Um, so, really well explained um, with with reasons behind why they're doing it. And the next question uh, we always want to cover is what makes your project great. And we can swap in that word great for lots of other words. Um, what makes your project interesting, innovative, revolutionary? What makes it exciting? What makes your project stand out um, from the crowd? Why should you put your money behind this and not other things? Um, and in their project description, um, what plan said this really clearly and um, had some amazing phrases. Uh, you can tell you had a really good writer behind um, your project page. Uh, they say they, the UK's leading, one of the UK's leading outdoor arts organisations. Amazing. Um, and then that they work in collaboration with diverse communities and artists to enrich lives through shared creative experiences. So that really kind of shows the benefit of, of what, what the plank is doing um, and, and why, why this is a great thing to put money into. And the next question is, who are you and what's your experience? And you would be really amazed at how many people miss this out of their project page. A lot of people kind of, you kind of assume that people know what you're doing and who you are already, but um, really important to make that clear in the page for someone who's coming to the project. You might not know that much. Um, and one of the main reasons for that is credibility. Um, so it says that you guys, you know what you're doing, you're the right people for the, the job, and you're going to deliver on what you'll say, you say you're going to do. Um, and so they have a really amazing piece of credibility on this page that 
this is their 25th anniversary. So they were planning to be doing this for 25 years. And a really amazing sentence that I love is, after a quarter of a century of inspiring creative excellence, we continue to have a huge appetite for artistic risk and innovation. So not only have they got the experience um, of doing it for that amount of time, um, they still have the, the passion um, and the appetite to do more of it. Um, that really sells it to me um, that, that the, this is an organisation that know what they're doing and they've got big plans for the future. A really fantastic um, little kind of introduction to, to their experience. And they also mention um, who, who founded the, the how, who founded Walk the Plank in the beginning in 1992? It's Liz Pugh and John Warsaw. So a really important thing is kind of to mention the people behind the project. It's really easy um, when you're kind of raising money through a website to not realise that there are people behind this project. Um, it's easy to become, think it's just a faceless organisation. Um, people want to support people at the end of the day. So it's really important to communicate that human element and, and kind of who's behind what, what this um, project's all about and who's a part of it. Um, so, um, these last three slides were pretty, um, pretty boring, you might have noticed. They were just big blocks of text. Um, and I kind of did this for a reason, kind of to hammer home um, the importance of visual texture on a page. Uh, so we're used to seeing lots of photographs and images and exciting um, colours and, and bits of design work on the internet nowadays. We're not used to reading big chunks of text. Um, so this, this is where I really want to kind of notice the things that you can use to spice up um, that project that project description. Um, and it's something that Walt Plank um, did really well with their page. So some images of, of the people, what you do, um, what plant had some pictures of all the outside events that they put on, loads of colourful, good quality images are, are really important. Um, and also uh, testimonials, really great to kind of break up the content. Um, some like some insider uh, quotes from people who are a part of the project, who people who, who want this to happen, um, can add to the credibility of your page. Um, really love to see quotes. Um, in, in, within that text as well. Um, and also really important to break it up with headings. I cannot stress this enough. Um, just breaks it up. It helps, um, makes it much easier to read. And a lot of people skim read and they want to kind of skip through the text and kind of find bits that they're interested in. And subheadings really help um, with this. And then lastly, um, it's really nice to put a bit of infographics in. If you've got kind of some boring figures um, and numbers that you want to get across, a lot more interesting to put it in a nice little colourful pie chart or graph. You'll see loads of interesting, engaging ways that people put, um, put these infographics into their project. Um, it doesn't have to be anything super fancy. A lot, most like computers um, have some sort of software on them that you can um, create little pie charts and graphs on. So it doesn't have to be something super fancy. Um, that can really, really help um, make your project a little bit more engaging. Um, so, Tom, um, other than written text, what um, else did you guys include on your page um, to make it more engaging? Um, I think one of the, the key things that made our appeal so appealing um, was using a video. Um, I think it's really important um, again, I think just to reiterate the point that you just made, we are used to, we're a short attention span society now, so people don't read through reams and reams of text, people are data heavy. Um, to get the, the key thing that we wanted to show was really how awful our current building was. Um, we had dripping taps, we had uh, rubbishy heaters, we had an old dining room table. Um, and I think by taking people on that journey to the old building and then just seeing the new building under construction and where their money was going to be spent, 
we could do so much in a two minute video. And the other key thing about that video was that it was social media friendly. So something that sat on the website, but that we could also tweet was so powerful because I think one thing I can't underestimate, I think the success of this campaign is having digital content that can be shared on social media. And for us, I think the the real, the, the, the killer point was that, that video. I think that showed people, but from people who are familiar with our work and those who'd never met us before, that this wasn't just about funding a new building just because we wanted a new one, but it was to show just how desperately awful our existing one was and how much we'd done in that. So the argument was, if you can see all the amazing things we've done for 25 years in an end of terraced house, just imagine what we can do in a fantastic new building. So that was it basically, the film did it, I think. Yeah, that's really great. Um, thanks Tom that you've mentioned a film there. Um, so it's another thing that you can pop in your um, project description. Not essential, but as Tom explained, it's an amazing um, piece of way, um, a way to communicate your story, not only on your page, but as a way to share through social media throughout your campaign. Um, and there's a lot more um, information and advice on how to create a good video in the project pack as well. Um, just some key points and tips. It doesn't have to be a Spielberg production, um, but there's just a few things to kind of think about when you I make think that's a really good point, actually. And I think one thing that we learned was that um, you don't want a polished film that looks like you spent 20,000 with trailers and a film crew. Actually, something that looks quite crude and emotive and actually quite sort of vox poppy, fly on the wall thing. People buy into something that's a bit rough and ready. So, yeah, don't get your celebrity trailer out. Just do something quite cheap and simple. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks, Tom. Um, so next, we're going to talk about rewards. One thing to mention is that rewards aren't essential. Um, you can uh, just run a donations-only project if you want. Um, but one thing we we always say is that rewards are a great way um, to really pull people in um, and in, kind of engage people in what you're doing um, and really motivate them to kind of to pledge on your project. And we do see that projects with um, rewards, um, the kind of average amount that's pledged on, on, on them is greatly increased. So really worth um, thinking about putting rewards on your project. Um, and we've broken down rewards into four kind of main categories, but I mean, the different kinds of rewards that we've seen on project is never ending. It's really kind of, as far as your imagination can take you. Um, so really good, again, to have a look at different projects and see what they offered as rewards. But so we've broken this down into four main categories that most things fall under. First, um, we have products and services, um, which most most like business projects will come. We see most um, projects will have some sort of a product or a service um, on their on their projects, and it's really important that you kind of make sure these are really good quality, really good value for money. I clearly explained what they are, and I really recommend including photographs of the rewards if you can within your description. Like have a little section on rewards, and just to kind of especially if it's like. Um, a t-shirt or a bag. People normally want to see it before before they uh, put their money behind it. Um, and also something that's kind of exclusive to what you're trying to do is good. Uh, a lot of projects will kind of, like, especially community projects um, or charities will kind of be like, well we don't really have anything that we could give away. Um, so you could also get um, businesses and partners to donate things um, to, to give uh, as, as rewards on your project. So we see great success with that and that also gets some more people involved and kind of encourages them to support you in the campaign and share it. Um, and so next we've got experiences and events. Um, an amazing kind of reward that we see extreme success with um, across the board. So this could be um, a ticket to the launch party. Um, it could be, if you're, you know, it could be a ticket to one of your outdoor events, um, if you were walk the plank. Um, or 
as well, it could be something, uh, a unique kind of experience behind the scenes, something you wouldn't usually get to do. So say it's a restaurant, um, maybe you get a chance to go into the kitchen and do a little workshop. Um, it's a really exciting kind of type of reward um, that can offer uh, there. Um, and also, next we've got sponsorship. So sponsorship can come in many different levels and shapes and sizes. It can be for an individual or um, a sort of a corporate reward as well. Um, and then we've also got um, thank yous, good old fashioned thank you, uh, just a little token of gratitude that um, also can come in lots of different shapes and sizes. Um, we'll we're gonna just have a look at some examples next. So um, here's some a few of the different products and services that we've seen on the website. We've got um, a space themed subscription box uh, from one of our Dorset projects. Um, it's about getting youth involved um, in learning about space and coding. And one of the one of the rewards was this fantastic little box. We've got um, some little experiments and learning bits and pieces in there and they've got a really nice photo as well um, and also at the bottom there's snack bars really amazing company called snacked uh, they're little fruit bars um, made from recycled and um, recycled banana waste so they've got a really lovely picture they're great nice and colorful and you get some other things alongside that too um, and it's got some some experience in events um, some examples here. Uh, so our Dorset Dormouse project, um, trying to save uh, the quickly disappearing dormice. Um, you can actually, for £100, you can go into the field and learn about um, where the dormice live, um, maybe see a dormouse if you're lucky. A really kind of exclusive, um, exciting reward on offer. Um, and at the bottom there, a day course, learning the art of preserving and fermenting vegetables. It's not often you get a chance to go and do that. Um, so, and it's really nice to get get the people who've supported you in um, to meet to meet them as well. I uh, love experience and events, so one of my absolute favourites. Um, really have a little think about what you might be able to offer um, along those lines. And then a couple of examples of sponsorship. As a sponsor of Dormouse from that Dormouse project as well, and you get some some little uh, some updates on how the Dormouse is doing over the years, um, and also an incredible one which I love at the bottom there: thirty pounds to sponsor the Ox, which was a flatback truck that they sent out to Africa. Um, as really incredible project, really recommend you having a look at that, and you could have your name printed on the side. Um, of the truck before it, the first truck before it gets sent out to Africa. Uh, so, again, really interesting, um, creative things on offer as sponsorship. And then we've got the thank you. Um, from Bridport Children Festival, you can get a hand painted thank you card from one of the children. That's not costing very much, but it's really personal and it means, it means quite a lot. Um, to how others um, pledged um, and also at the bottom five pounds and you get a big thank you and um, included on the supporters page of the website so you'll really be recognized on their website and also just want to um, note that um, there's going to be this little box that you can see in the corner there um, uh, this is the just donate box so Anyone, um, regardless of whether you have rewards or not, will be able to just donate some money if they want to without anything in return. So that's on every single project page as well. So Tom, could you just kind of tell us a little bit about um, the rewards you chose and how you chose them? Okay, yes. Um, we're a company that originally started on a ship back in 1992. Um, and then over the last 25 years, we put on shows all around the UK and all around the world as well. Um, so what we wanted to do with our rewards program was give everybody the opportunity to feel that they could buy into Walk the Blank's history. So even if you just pledge £10, you're going to get a quirky thank you, which we're thinking is going to be something like a, a box of matches with a ship on the front. Um, and then right up to a crowdfunders VIP dinner, which is to reward people who pay 500 pounds or more. And we're just organizing that, which is going to be in our new uh, ship's mess next door. Um, 
But in between, we wanted to give lots of people opportunities to buy things that they couldn't. I think this is the phrase that everybody use, experiences that money can't normally buy. So for instance, you can get a backstage VIP pass to one of our shows next year, meet all the artists. Uh, you can actually um, have your name on one of the major fireworks that we throw up into the air. Um, and uh, you can also, um, one thing that we realized over the last few years is that Walk the Plank t-shirts and Walk the Plank hoodies have got a cult status. When people see them at shows, they want them. So we knew there's a huge demand for having something with the new Walk the Plank logo. So we're creating a 25th anniversary t-shirt and a 25th anniversary hoodie. Um, and then another thing is through the um, annual offices, we have a ship's mast that goes up from the ground floor to the top. And we've got this really clever idea, which is, um, it's been hugely popular called pin your colors to the mast and for 50 pounds you can have your name on a steel band around the mast and that'll be seen by people coming to this building for the next 25 50 years so my tip is to create things that give people an experience of your company give lots of different price points so you can feel a crowdfunder you can feel as important if you pay 10 pounds or if you pay 500 and lots of price points in the beginning. but if you look on our page we've made them really witty and clever we didn't actually put any images up but we've made them all sound really fun. And no matter which one you bought, you think I'm really important to this campaign. Amazing, fantastic advice from Tom. They had some fantastic rewards on their page. Um, to definitely go and have a look at those. And often the advice I give to someone if they're really struggling to think about what they could offer as a reward is to go back to your network map and that we talked about um, in the first webinar series and kind of look at all the different kinds of people you've got um, who you want to support you and, and kind of think what would they want put yourself in those shoes in their shoes or even better go and ask them what you know what might you want to see as a reward on a project um, so that's what I kind of say to people who are struggling and so before next time and um, I really really highly recommend for you to get a start on drafting your project description. So just get in there and give it a go. Um, start typing something, start getting some photos in. Um, the sooner you start, the less scary it is. Um, and I also really recommend to get feedback. Um, our, head of, uh, our head of projects, Sammy, is running a crowdfunder project soon, and she's been sending us her project just description to have a look at um, to kind of get some feedback. Uh, I must have seen it like three or four times now um, but it's really important uh, to get to get that that really um, solid feedback from the people that you're um, that you're aiming at and to make sure you're communicating um, your story really clearly you've got all the information on there. And then next, brainstorm the reward ideas. Have a think about what you might offer. And as I said, ask people if you're struggling and ask people anyway. Um, and thirdly, something we haven't touched on in um, this session, but a really important thing to do is to calculate your target. So there's some really detailed advice on how to do this in the project guide. Um, so I really recommend going and having a look and really thinking carefully about what your target's going to be. Um, and so just gonna last question for Tom. Um, if you could give one piece of advice to someone about to run their crowdfunder project, what would it be? Okay, I'll start this piece of advice. Is uh, if anybody's hesitant or nervous, just remember the advice I'm giving is based on someone who'd never done a crowdfunding campaign before. So this was put at the top of my to-do list at the beginning of this year. And I thought it was going to be a nightmare project. And I think by firstly reading through the uh, your website as well, so um, it's really good following through all that. But my advice from all this is keep your story simple. And I think the key thing is if it gets over complicated, it isn't going to work. Imagine that you're selling this proposition to somebody that you're having a pint with down the pub. And if it's that simple, that's how it works. And we kept on retesting our story and I think the reason why it worked is because we we kept it really simple. So don't overcomplicate things. Keep it simple and keep it really interesting and fun. Don't lose humour in your story. People buy into humour, as you said. People buy into people. 
Amazing. Thank you so much, Tom, for your amazing advice today. Um, and if you have any other questions or need any help, um, you can email in to support at crowdfunder.co.uk. Um, and we will see you next time, uh, next Monday, 9th of October um, at 12 p.m. again for the next part of this series. Thank you very much.